Good morning. It is the Drive to School podcast. I'm still Pastor Goodman. Patrick is still Patrick, still the marketing and development executive at Higher Things, still with us in the Drive to School. How are you doing, man? I, I've been sitting in the back seat for a while now, so I'm, I'm happy to move up shotgun. Loving it. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you doing, Pastor Take- Goodman? I'm all right. Take the ox cord. How we, uh, what are we talking about today? <laughs> I mean, let's talk about something that happened uh, not too long ago. Let's talk about what happened uh, at the Oscars with Will Smith and Chris Rock. I think uh, the people deserve to hear our opinion on it. Yeah, uh, let's let's cast our voices with the multitude. Obviously, uh, ours are the ones everybody is waiting for um, because nobody else is talking about it right now. Oh, what no, no. What had happened? <laughs> Yeah, everything is just as quiet as you could be. It's not every single TMZ article, every single CNN article. You would think Half that Russia, TikTok. yeah, you would think that Russia had not invaded Ukraine or that the war was over because everyone cares about Will Smith and Chris Rock. It probably says a little bit that uh, there is more media devoted to Will Smith smacking Chris Rock than the country of Russia smacking the country of Ukraine. Ukraine yeah. But, uh, I guess we're not going to fix that problem by talking about Will Smith. Let's go. <laughs> no, I just, I think it's, it's really interesting how our culture is kind of just like, it reminds me of, of a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away when Taylor Swift once, uh, once won a, a, a video. I'm sorry, I'm going to have for... to interrupt you, but uh, Will Smith is actually the, the greatest uh, talk show or award show fiasco of all time. Oh yeah, right. Oh man, like it's crazy that I, I feel like that's almost it's been ten years since that happened. Like that seems know. about right. So like ten years later, we get a get a new all time greatest meme. Makes me really happy. And this seems like one that's going to have a lot of legs. But it's, I mean, I I don't want it to. I'm I'm yeah. honestly heartbroken over the whole thing. Like Kanye interrupting Tay Tay was um it, it was funny in its own sad way but this is just sad in its own sad way um you, you i had, would like to I'm, i would like to point out that you said tay tay because you you my friend are definitely a swifty i can tell <laughs> there's some swift on. there's some taylor swift records in that vinyl collection you're not wrong sir um no but i i well, if pivoting away from my my taylor record collection um <laughs> <laughs> oh man i just i feel bad for everyone right now i except no, I just feel bad for everyone. I feel bad for Chris Rock for like it's yeah. He does what he does. Like you can everybody hates Chris, Chris man. Is, but everybody hates like, Chris. The same is still true. Like all of the yeah, the same expectation. Yeah. Um, no, I mean the- it's sad because you you look at him and if you just analyze the situation, if you look at him making a, a pretty simple joke, I saw one TikTok where it was a, a guy with alopecia. And he's like, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, that joke was pretty tame. My mom got me got me this hat, and it's a hat that says bad hair day on it. Um, like, in the grand scheme of things, like, what, what Chris Rock said is pretty tame. But, I mean, when you're the husband of a wife who's afflicted by um, an autoimmune disease like alopecia, like, you're going to be naturally defensive, right? That That's surely all Will Smith has to be defensive over, isn't it? No, not at all. And I think this is actually <laughs> this is actually it, though, um, because like you're right, it was a tame joke. And the, the response was clearly so over the top that like this is why I it's it's absurd, but it's just not funny to me because there's just there's so much shame involved. Like this, this is mm-hmm. clearly like a whole mess just boiling over at the wrong thing, because it's not just a bald joke. Um, right. it, there, this is it's, it's not. Well, it's on podcast. Will Smith's wife cheated on him rubbed his face in it yeah sort of made a whole it, social thing a big publicity stunt over her infidelity that he he then has to live with like keeping in mind this is one of the top three four biggest actors um of our generation right um mm-hmm. like i have watched fresh prince of bel-air front to back at least three times like i love that yeah. show wild wild west I'm not going to take any shame for it. I love that movie. It's a great movie. I don't care what anyone else says. Don't at me. Men in Black. All right. Men in Black. Yeah. 100%. Independence Day. Great movie. Welcome Mm -hmm. to Earth. No, but I mean, he was dug or drugged through it. 
um, for for pub- publicity's sake. And it's just it's very sad because, like, I don't I think it just reflects that he's not in a good state. Um, and if you look back on on his speech too, like that occurred twenty minutes after this happened. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, he if wants you look to be a vessel his, for God's love. Oh, for um, love, yeah. And I actually firmly believe that. Like I, I do too. A lot, a lot of people, yeah. A, like a lot of the criticism you say you, you're seeing right now on TMZ and Reddit and where and TikTok, wherever else, is saying that Will Smith did that to cover face. His publicist got in his ear immediately after it happened and told him to save face. I don't think that's actually true. I think Will Smith actually believed every single word he said because he truly viewed himself as trying to protect his family. Um, but ultimately his wife has pushed him to the point of having to do something so shameful to, to, to even save a little bit of face. Well, but this is the thing about shame. It doesn't actually make sense. It, it's, it's an identity thing, not an action thing. Mm-hmm. Um, imagine being somebody that the whole world watches your every move um, and then get to, to be put in, in one of the most humiliating positions possible mm-hmm. only to, to have to maintain a brave face through it, to look at yourself in the mirror and not see the measure of your accomplishments versus your failures, even more than this, not even to see yourself as, as somebody for whom Christ would, would die and, and live. But shame is something that would redefine you to an incident, not even a thing that you did wrong, but oftentimes a thing that was done yep. to you. Shame speaks so loudly in your ear that it covers up all of the other voices until it sort of boils over and it very very rarely boils over into the place that it's supposed to the idea that that will smith would want to be a vessel for love in a world where he has seen all of the pain that comes from the lack of it is not a surprising thing it's it's a laudable thing the problem is yeah. when we try and put it on our own shoulders to accomplish it the the idea that we would have to sort of be known by what was done to us and, and what we saw there was very much a desire to, to be known by something else, mm-hmm. to be known by somebody who would care for his family, to be known by, well, for us, we still, we still put it off base because even though the, the intention was clear, look at how it turned out. Like, it's not okay to walk up and hit a guy. It's not okay. Yeah. Um, especially for telling a pretty tame joke as a joke teller, like comedians, mm-hmm. that's what they do. Yep. And for all accounts, I'm, I'm relatively sure they were, they were pretty good friends um historically speaking um and no and it was a tame joke and but someone who is like like we said he is one of the most famous actors in the world and if you look at will smith's last five years the only thing notable that's happened to him out of all the movies he's made etc some really good movies um out of all that the one thing that's defined his last five years is is this instant right and is the shame that he lives with that kind of makes sense because the movies are a paycheck at a certain, like you can be proud Mm -hmm. of your work, but this is your life. Like there's a difference between your career and your family and to have that sort of put there. um, For us, this is why baptism is so important that you would have an identity as worthy of love in Christ before you have to deal with the fact that you're going to be yoked to another sinner because in the, the very best of marriages, there's still two sinners stuck in a box with each other. And so Mm -hmm. the person who knows exactly what kind of sinner I am better than anyone else is my wife. And I I know you can say the same, like there's a, if if that's all there is, even when there's not infidelity like that, there, there's still just a a depth of shame that can overwhelm a marriage. And so we have to find identity first for ourselves inside of our baptism, that, that we are people worthy of love because Christ has first loved us so that when we look at each other, we don't have to prove love. We don't have to prove love by our brash actions or our talk show appearances, or even just the the small little gestures that so often go unknown and unnoticed. We start as baptized and we deal with each other as if our neighbors baptized too. And and there we actually have something to stand on. What we saw was a mess of self-righteousness. Like this is Mm -hmm. what self-righteousness looks like in the midst of shame. And and there's going to be some great memes. I I know guys, but. Well, no, and and, I mean, and like you say, and you, you, you say it a lot, but I think it it bears consistent repeating is sin breaks stuff. Right. And sin is obviously broken something here. And and I mean, it's my hope that there is um, what he said last night and he does rely on his faith and, and his salvation to kind of pull him out of, of the despair that I think he's obviously going through. Yeah. Um, if all we really have in this world is, is sort of the things that we can, can build, like, honestly, you, 
as great as Men in Black 2 was. Um, you just, you're, you're not going to be able to actually win your salvation by squashing the aliens. Um, <laughs> it, in, instead, fall back on something, sure. Because, yeah. look, I, I mean, the, the bigger thing is that now he has to live with himself, not only as a person who was embarrassed before, but how do you how do you go forward from this from that night it, i wouldn't want to be his publicist sure but honestly i don't know that i even want to be his mirror if all you have yeah. is sort of the explanations that you can sort of spin on this thing because mm-hmm. you got to look at yourself in that mirror and come up with a reason why and if all you have is this bounce between manic and depressed between you know jubilant because we're gonna make something of this world and then broken because we couldn't it, it's it's gonna end worse next time Mm-hmm. We, we, we got to lean on the gifts of God. We got to lean on the identity in Christ because otherwise there's just, there's nothing but shame. There is something louder though. There, there is an honor given inside of, inside of the gospel, inside of Christ. And it's not something that you have to pay for. It's not something that you have to even maintain. It's only for sinners. It's only for the ones who have been abused, who have been cheated on, who have been the ones cheating. It's, it's actually given for the sinners. Like this is what the cross is. Amen. Let's end it right there. There, right. everyone's at school right now. That's that's what we need to end on. <laughs> All right, go to school, learn stuff. Don't hit comedians. We out. <laughs> <laughs>